All right, so I'm going to show you how to do um, the Mendeleev lab that we did today in class. So I have my stack of elements, or my cards of my elements. I am going to go ahead and take out my unknowns. So I have seven of those. So that should be all of my unknowns. Take those out, set those aside. So you will need to cut out all of these cards um, from the PDF that I posted on Canvas. And then we have all of our knowns. So now what we need to do is we need to arrange our known elements without looking at the periodic table um, by looking at the properties that are on the cards. So what we're gonna do first is we know that the periodic table um, is arranged by increasing atomic number. So I'm going to first get them in order by increasing atomic number. So um, five, six, Five, six, seven, um, and they may not be in order, so I think these are actually kind of in order, so anyway, I don't know where I get that, anyway, um, 15, 18, 31, 33, uh, 17, uh, 54, 38, 35, number two, um, and then 20 put it down here all right so now I kind of have them in for the most part increasing atomic number now our second thing is that our periodic table is arranged in a way where our properties repeat themselves periodically and they repeat themselves through their columns so all of our columns should have similar properties all right um, so starting over here with helium number two, um, helium number two says that it is a gas and it is colorless and its reactivity is almost none and it has a very high ionization energy. So what we need to do is we need to realize that um, we have our trends and so we're going to use the information to see where this should be. Well, first of all, it's a gas. So a gas is a non-metal, and I know that all my non-metals should be over here, and all my metals should be over here. So usually your gases are gonna be over here, and your solids are gonna be over here. So because this is a gas, it's gonna be over here. Also, my reactivity is almost none, so I need to think of what column holds my gases that have no reactivity. Well, those are my noble gases, and look, my ionization energy is very high, and I should know that my ionization energy increases as I go across the period. So this one is actually going to be on this side, um, and then it's going to be all the way up here. So I'm going to put it up there. And then, so now that I know that this is going to be my noble gas column, now I'm going to try and see, can I find any other gases that are almost no, are almost none react, reactivity. So I have um, neon here. Neon is a gas and it has almost none. So I know neon probably gonna go somewhere right there. Um, this one is argon. So it's a gas and it's almost no reactivity. So I know argon's gonna go over here. Um, xenon is a gas and it's almost none, so that's going to go there. Um, and I think that is all of my noble gases. All right, so then lithium number three, let's start with this one. Number three, it's a solid, so I know it's going to go over here. Um, 
and it's a very reactive. So I know that this is going to be my column one metals. So this is gonna be my column one metal. So now let me see if I can find any other um, solids that are very reactive. Well, I have sodium here. That's a solid that's very reactive. So I'm gonna put that there. Um, solid that is very reactive. Ah, here's a solid that's very reactive. So then I'm gonna put that over here. Um, oh, that's a gas that's very reactive, so I don't want that one. I want a solid that's very reactive. This is very reactive, so this one's going to go down here, which means that this 56 is going to go here. All right. Um... All right, so then I can kind of do, so this is number three, so that would be number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight. I don't think I have a number nine, I think it's a blank. So what you're gonna do is as you're arranging this, you're going to come across um, blanks in your periodic table and that's where your unknown uh, cards are going to go. So one of my unknowns is gonna go here, so I'm gonna leave that blank for now. So I have number 10, 11, do I have number 12? I don't think so. That's going to be another blank. So 13, 14, 15. Uh, I don't think I have 16, so that's going to be another blank. So 17 is there. 18, 19, 20 is going to go there. Um, oh, the other thing is this does not include your transition metals. So what's going to happen is it's going to jump from 20 all the way to number 31. So 31 should go here. So that's this one, 31. And then 32 is missing. So 33 goes there, 34, 35, 36, I think is another blank. So I'm gonna skip that one. Um, but I know that this is the end of this row. So I need to start a new row. So this is 35, 36, I need whatever 37 is, wherever 37 is, but I think 37 is also missing. Um, so I think that's another unknown, so I'm gonna leave that blank. So then 38, and then um, it's gonna go from 38 to 49. So 49, 50, 51 is missing, 52, 52. so there's 52, 53, 54, and then 55 and 56 over here. So now that I have my periodic table, my quote periodic table, um, organized, now I can go back and take my unknowns and figure out where my seven unknowns go in these boxes. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the properties on the cards and put them to where they have similar properties, right? So our columns are all gonna have similar properties. So this is column one. These are our alkali metals. These are gonna be our metals, or so our solids, that are very reactive. These are our alkali earth metals, alkaline earth metals. These are also going to be solids, but they are going to be a little less reactive. And then these we're not too sure of, all right? So we don't have these special names. Um, but this is column seven. These are our halogens. So these are going to be our very reactive gases. And then this column is our noble gases. These are going to be our not reactive gases. So if I know that these four columns have certain properties, I'm going to look through these cards and see if I can find cards with those certain properties. So this is a solid that does not talk about its reactivity so i'm going to put that one to the side this is a solid that also does not talk about reactivity so i'm going to put that one to the side this one is a solid that says reactive so i'll keep that one this is a solid that is reactive so i'll keep that one this is a gas that is almost not reactive so i'll keep that one this is a solid that is very reactive and then this is a gas that is very reactive. So these are the ones that fall into my four columns um, that I know, you know, certain properties of. So looking at our first one. So for me, I have unknown number two. It's a gas that is very reactive. 
So a gas that's very reactive, that sounds like a halogen. So I know that that's going to be in my column seven. The only blank that I have in column seven is this one up here. So then I think unknown two should go there. Number three is a solid that is very reactive. So again, my very reactive solids are gonna be over here and those are gonna be my column one, my alkali metals. So I think column three is gonna go there. Number four is a gas that is almost not reactive. So that sounds like one of my noble gases. So this is this column and this is the only gap there. Number one is a solid that is reactive, and number five is a solid that is reactive. So now I have two solids that have the same reactivity, and I need to figure out where each one of these should go. So now what I'm going to look at is now I'm gonna look at my ionization energies because this is 10 and this is seven. So now I need to think, well, what does my ionization energy do as I go across the period and down the column? So ionization energy is going to increase as you go across and it's going to decrease as you go down. So I'm going to look for a number that is between like, so I'm going to see if there's a, like, if there's a number that this goes between and there's a number that this goes between. So let's look at this blank right here. I have uh, ionization energy of 5.1 and 5.9. So I don't think either of these would go in that blank because I need to have a number between these two numbers and neither one of my, ne neither one of these numbers would fit in between those. So I don't think that's going there. Um, what about this one? I have 10.4 to 12. Well, this one says 10.3, but I know it's not this one. Hmm. Let me see. Um, well, let me see. Can I look at any? Okay, so I have these four going in these four. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change what I'm just what I'm doing. So I want a solid reactive. So again, my solid reactive. Um so my ionization energies aren't really working out the way I need them to. So let me look at a different, let me look at a different property. So let me look at my, um, there's density. I know we didn't really talk about densities, but if you look at your cards that are on the table, you'll notice that your densities are gonna try, are going to kind of have the same uh, trend as your atomic radius. So they're going to increase going across, or going down, and they're gonna decrease going Cross, I believe. Um, so if we look at this column, we look at our densities of 1.85, and then we have our blank, and then 1.57, 2.54, and 3.6. So yes, in general, our density is going to increase going down. So our density, we have this one as 1.96, and this one as 1.74. Um, so that doesn't really work. So then how do we figure out where this goes? Ah, okay, so let's look at our conductivity. So this is kind of what we did in class. We had to look at all of our properties to see, you know, where these went. So our, our um, ionization energies really aren't working out, our reactivities really aren't working out, and our densities really aren't working out. But look, we have a poor conductor and a good conductor. So if you remember on the notes, we talked about conductivity and we said that our um, well, column one and column two are good conductors. So I think that because this is a good conductor and also this is good conductor, this is good conductor, this is excellent conductor, because these are also good conductors, I'm gonna put the good conductor with the good conductors. And then I'm gonna figure out where this one goes um, later. So now we have these. Um, so let's see if we can figure out, so they're all poor conductors, fair to poor conductors. They're all solids. Oh, my densities are different now. A little bit this one. So, hmm, let's see. 
my density is 0 0.0013, now it's 4.8, and now it's 6. So I need a number between 0 0.0013 and 4.81. So then of my three, I think it's this one. So I'm going to put this one there. And then I have these two. So I have density of 6.69 and 5.32. So these, looks like these two are fairly close. So between these two, this one is a poor conductor and this one is fair to poor. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one here because this one is a little bit more to the left. So this one's gonna have a little bit better conductivity. Um, and this one fits in with my uh, densities. It also fits in with my ionization energies. Um, this one is definitely poor. So this one has a little bit less conductivity. So I'm gonna put it to the one that's further to the right. And also that one matches with my ionization energy. So I have 7.3, 8.6, and nine. So that matches with my ionization energies. So that's what I think my unknowns are. So then we look at our periodic table. Now that we have everything organized and we have where our unknowns should go, now we look at our periodic table and we look at our unknowns and see which element those are. So I think that um, unknown two looks like it's in between oxygen and neon. So I think number two is fluorine. Um, number four looks like it's below argon. So I think number four is krypton. Um, number three over here is below uh, potassium. So I think number three is rubidium, RB. Um, number five is in between phosphorus and chlorine. So I think number five is sulfur. Um, and then we have number six and number seven. So number six is in between SN and tellurium, which I think is TE. So this is SB, which is antimony. And then number seven is here. It's in between GA and AS. So between GA and AS is GE, which is germanium. So I think that's correct, but I will post the key on Canvas so that you can check me and check your own answers. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will see you when you get back from quarantine. Bye, guys.